Home prices hit another record high. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, this is a nationwide article that came out that I'm going to go over. But what about Jacksonville? What's the market like up here in Jacksonville? And what about the housing prices in Florida overall compared to the nation? I'm covering all that tonight. Also, I'm going to be covering all this. All right, I'm going to go over what is the current active listings. That's our inventory. How many sold in the last seven days? How many homes are under contract? How many new homes sold in the last seven days? What is the current active new homes listings? How many active listings are there for closures? And now we'll look at the pre foreclosures and short sales. How did people pay for these homes? What percentage of homes sold under list, at list, and above list? And much, much more. And on top of that, I'm going to add also a section about condos. We're going to go over the condos because a lot of people are concerned about what the condo situation is right now. So we're going to cover that too. Hey, you know what? My name's Tom Kerr. I'm just a regular guy who happens to be a real estate agent up here in North Florida. That's right. And every week I bring you this show, Bubble Watch, and this is week six of season three. And I go into the back end of my MLS and show you the real numbers in real estate, okay? And let you decide whether you want to buy or sell. So without any delay, let's, we're going to get to all that, that stuff about the price is the high, you know the highest price but first let's start off with the MLS and look in those active listings all right here we are in the back end of Northeast Florida MLS this is my account and what I want you to focus on right up here is the view results that is where the numbers are going to be and down here is where I'll click on um, what we're going to look at so we're going to start off with those active listings first that number is 9,335. Okay, next we're going to go look and see how many sold in the last seven days. That number is 537. Okay, and now I take it over and I export it. And when I export all that data from the solds, it's going to give me a lot more to put into those Excel spreadsheets, those charts. Okay, next we take a look and see how many are active under contract. That number is 1,456, and those are active under contract with contingencies, and that can be contingencies like for repairs or appraisals, you know, um, anything like that, um, wait, wait for a house to sell, whatever, um, you know, um, inspections, all that. So next we look at how many went pending in the last seven days. That number is 369. And what that is, those were, they were um, active under contract, but the contingencies were cleared and they went into pending status. So the next step would be, uh, would be closing, but not all pendings close. Sometimes things go bad in the, in the last few days. So we, we keep an eye on that too. All right, next we're gonna take a look and see, uh oh, and when you add up the pending and the active under contract, that gives you your total under contract, okay? Next we're gonna see how many people withdrew their listings in the last seven days. That number is 72. Now these are people, the listing is still an active listing, it just can't be shown. That's why it isn't with drawn status. It could be somebody sick in the family. They don't want people walking through. We had a lot of that during the COVID time. Uh, could be somebody's working from home um, and can't leave the house um, for various reasons. Sometimes it's repairs um, that they need to do and they don't want people coming through the house while they're doing the repairs. All right, next we're going to see how many expired in the last seven days. 136 homes expired. Okay, now these are definitely, um, you know, not active listings no longer. They're, they're off the market. Um, the house did not sell. Okay, all right, now we're going to take a look and see how many new homes sold in the last seven days. That number is 112. And next we're going to look and see what the inventory is for new homes. That would be the active listings that are new construction. That number is 2,192. Okay, the next thing I do is I take out of the active listings, regular active listings, and we look and see how many are in foreclosure status. Okay, that number is 321. Next, we look and see how many of the active listings are in pre-foreclosure status. That number is 14. And next, we look and see how many are in short sale status. That number is 30. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the condominiums. 
I break down basically the same information, so we're going to start off with those active listings that are con con that are condominiums. Okay, that number is one. That number is 1,131. Okay, next we're going to take a look and see how many uh, sold in the last seven days. That number is 36. Next, we're going to look at how many are active under contract. That number is 125. Next, we're going to see how many went pending in the last seven days. Whoop! Let's let's go back up. We need to go to the to the sold ones. Hold on a second. That was 36, and we're going to go ahead and export that data too. Okay, so I'm going to export that that data from the solds there and pull out all the other information that we need. Okay. Now we're going to take a look, see how many went pending in the last seven days. That number is 20, and the same thing, when you add up active under contract and pending, you get the total under contract. All right, how many um, condos were withdrawn in the last seven days? That number is 15. And how many expired? And these are ones that did not sell. That number is 21. Now we also take a look at um, the new condos. So we want to see how many new condos sold in the last seven days. That number is zero. And how many are active uh, new, new condos that are in an active status? That number is nine. All right, we also look at those condos that are in foreclosure status, pre-foreclosure and short sales. And so out of the active listings, the ones that are in foreclosure is 46. Those that are in pre-foreclosure, zero. And the amount of short sales, that number is one. All right, now I take all that data and, it, and I export it into an Excel spreadsheet, okay, which looks a little, you know, messed up like this, but then I convert it into my own spreadsheet, which makes it a little bit easier. It looks like this, okay, and it's going to give us a lot more information than what we just covered right there. I'm going to sort it all out for you. Hey, you know, right now I know I'm, I'm out here on location. I'm in another new community in front of another new home, okay, so it, you, you may hear a lot of construction activity in the background. Also, it's a breezy day. So, you know, I've got the little wind thing on the microphone, but I'm going to try to do the best we can. And by the way, if these new homes that you see me stand in front of, if that interests you and you want one of those or want an information, then just give me a call. Hey, what did those interest rates do? Okay, while all these numbers are sorting out, let's see what the interest rates did this last week. All right, here we are. Um, we're looking at the 30-year uh, fixed, and last week, as you can see, all these charts you'll see down here is where we start with last week's, and then up here is where we ended up this week. All right, so last week we were at 6.998 and ended up at 7.02, so not much change. Yeah, we've got a few arrows, but the changes were so small that it's pretty close to being the same. All right, let's see what those FHA rates did because they're generally less. Okay, FHA last week, we were at 6.42, um, a few arrows up there, a couple down, but not much, and we ended up at 6.48, so the same trend. Now let's take a look at the VA. And as you can see with the VA, we start, uh, last week we ended at 6.45, and we ended up this week at 6.50. So, um, you know, there they had a few couple days where it was just unchanged, it just stalled out. So. Um, Still, still pretty close. All right, now that we've seen that, now all that data sorted out, now I'm gonna go into my Excel spreadsheets for you where I'm gonna give you all this data, okay? I'm gonna give you first the data that's gonna be on everything, okay, up here in the Northeast Florida MLS, and then what I'm gonna do is break out the condos from that and separate the condo information specifically from that data, okay? So let's get on with the Excel spreadsheets. All right, here we are into the Excel spreadsheets, and as you can see right here, everything in yellow is going to be the current weeks. Um, this one here, we are in week six of season three, right under this column. But those previous ones are the previous weeks here of the season, see week five and week four. And uh, the column next to it that's in white, that is one year ago. So that was week six, 
one year ago. That was season two. And the YOY is going to be your year over year difference, okay, in percentage. All right, so let's start off here at the top here. Um, active listings is 9,335. Okay, so we see that that has gone up from last week and the week before. Um, definitely up a lot from last year, okay. 63% uh, increase, in fact. Okay, solds 537. Um, that is up from last week. Um, let's see, active under contract 1,456. Pending 369. For a total under contract 1,825, and that is a drop. Okay, so we've seen it. We saw it drop last week, and now we've seen it drop again. And if we scroll back, let's take a look here. Um, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it's been going down. It was, it's fluctuated some in the 1900s and over 2000 then. So, so we got to watch that, okay? Because these that are under contract then are going to end up being our next solds, okay? And if that number is down, then the sold numbers may be going down. We'll see by how much, okay? Next, we're going to take a look here and see the withdrawals. That's 72. Expired is 136 and new home sold 112. So that's up from last week. Okay, um, almost about the same as last year. Home new home inventory is 2,192, and the number down here percentage of homes sold that are new jumped from last week to 20.86. Okay, so one fifth of all the homes sold were new construction homes. All right, let's just take a quick snapshot look of the. Um, Condos right here, um, co active condos, 1,131. So that is up some. Now this is the interesting part, and this is the part was, is this where it's turning? We don't know yet, we'll see. In South Florida, it's definitely turned. Um, condos sold 36. Now everything else went up this week, but the condos went down. But still the percentage of actives that are condos is still in the 12% range. Okay, how do people pay for these houses? Okay, 23% cash, so that's down from the last couple of weeks. Well, last one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, you know, several weeks, all right? Uh, conventional uh, went up 43%, FHA 15%, up a little bit, uh, VA um, about the same, and others stayed pretty close to the same. All right, foreclosures. Okay, here in week six, 321. So it's up a little bit from last week. Pre-foreclosures, 14. The same short sales stayed the same for the total, 365. Okay, so this is up. Okay, we see last week actually dropped. Then we went back up some. Still didn't get up to past week four. So this big foreclosure tsunami has failed to develop. Okay, it has increased, but believe me, this is not 2008. All right, here we look at the homes that sold under list, at list, and above list, and this is the percentage, okay? 73% uh, of the homes sold under list price, 15.46 um, sold at list, and about 11 and a half sold above list. Okay, now keep in mind, okay, now we see this jump there in homes that sold under list, and now, you know, the median price of homes keeps going up, okay? But you see this, but you keep seeing these percentages sold under list. Well, remember, this is the percentage sold under list, not under market value, okay? And homes that sold at list isn't homes that sold at market value, and homes that sold above list aren't homes that sold above market value. So these are based on the prices that the sellers had put their house up for sale. So a lot of them may have been overpriced and that's why you see a large percentage under list. And homes that sold above list, some of that could be to get multiple offers, they priced it below market to draw the people and then they got above list. All right, now we look at in the categories of the price points. Okay, 500,000 and up. 28.49%, um, so that is a drop over the last few weeks. Homes that sold in the 400s, um, up a little bit, 15.46. Homes that sold in the 300s, okay, that jumped up some, 24.95, almost 25%. Homes that sold in the 200s, that fell, and homes that sold below 200, that actually has gone up. Um, you know, we haven't seen it close to this since week two. 
All right, over in the other column is the new homes that sold in those price ranges. 35 new homes sold at 500 and above, 15 in the 400s. The 43 in the 300s, 19 in the 200s, none below 200. All right, so we see that um, sweet spot there is the 300s. And speaking of new homes, let's look at how many sold under list, at list, and above list. We see that the ones that sold under list uh, came up over the last couple of weeks. Homes that sold at list um, still holding there 17.86, almost 18%. And homes that sold above list, 16%, um, which is, I think, still kind of strong um, considering the market we're in. And they're still holding on to these prices on these new homes. Okay, all that data right there is from the Northeast Florida MLS. So what I do is, because there's a lot of other MLS boards up here, some smaller boards, because this Jacksonville area is like, like nine counties, okay, the Jacksonville Metro. Some people say seven, I say it's more like nine. These are the nine I'm looking at. So what I'm gonna do is, I go into what is called MLS Advantage. That's the next thing, where it takes in these other MLS boards. Now, all it doesn't separate the condos by themselves, so that's why I don't do this for the condos. So this is gonna show the same sales of everything in this whole area, okay, that was in there, then that's included in MLS Advantage. And then what I do is I take it into the Excel spreadsheet. First, we're going to look at the numbers, see what the total sold is and compare it with the others. And then we're going to look at by county. I break it down by these nine counties and how many sold in each county. And then you also can look, because of my Excel sheets, you can see what the previous weeks were. So right now, let's go to MLS Advantage. Okay, here we are in MLS Advantage, and we're looking at those nine counties, Baker, Union, Bradford, Clay, Nassau, Duval, St. John's, Flagler, and Putnam. So what we're gonna do now is go over here and hit the search button. That brings us up to 712 properties for sale, or sold. All right, here we look at putting them into the counties, and as we can see, we have a total of 712, and it works out that four in Baker, one in Union, seven in Bradford, 64 in Clay, 50 in Nassau, 290 in Duval, St. John's had 176, Flagler 103, Putnam 17. Okay, so we see we had an increase over last week, okay, where sales were up, and some counties actually went down, okay? We see where uh, Nassau County dropped. Um, we see where um, uh, Flagler dropped a little bit, and the rest of them seem to do pretty good. Well, except Union dropped one also. All right, now let's take a look at those condo numbers, okay? Um, here we are, week 16, uh, the condo's active, 1,131, as we see the increase, solds 36. As we were mentioned before, everything else went up, but the condos went down, okay? So we gotta see, is this the turning point or is this just a blip in the radar? Active under contract 125, pending 20, total under contract fell to a number of 145. So um, that's the lowest since week nine. All right, withdrawns 15, expires 21, no new condos sold and new condos active nine, so nothing else added. How do people pay for these condos? All right, as we look here, we see the cash, 58.33%, so that is up, okay? That jumped up, conventional down a little bit, 36, no FHA, VA, 2.78, and others, 2.78. And you can see the numbers on the side show you how many uh, condos in there. There was a total of 36 sold, so we see 21 were in cash, 13 were conventional, no FHA, one VA and one other. Okay, the foreclosures just jumped up one. We just had one more foreclosure, no pre-foreclosures, and one short sale. Okay, here we go, looking at the condos that sold under list, 91.67%. So we jumped back into the 90s. Condos sold at list, 8.33, and no condos sold above list. Over here on the side, you see 33 of them sold under list and three sold at list. Okay, in the pricing categories, okay, 500 and above was only 8.33%. Wow, that, that is dramatic, okay? Condos that sold in the 400s, that went up, okay, a little bit. Condos in the 300s, okay, that dropped. Condos in the 200s went up, and a biggest increase was the ones that sold below 200. Well, we gotta, we gotta watch this. Next week's gonna be interesting. Over on the side is the numbers that went for those corresponding categories. 
once again, nothing new in the new, so we move on. Okay, here because we're concerned about, you know, the, the, the new law that will be going into effect where it affects condos that are three stories and above total, the building total, okay, not the unit. And, all, and so we want to see, okay, how many sold in these certain amount of stories and just see if there's a pattern to see if less of the higher stories are being sold. So here we'll look at three were one stories, 17 were two stories, 13 were three stories, two were four, one was six for a total of 36. Now another thing that is affected is the year. So as we see here, um, what I do is I show you the year. So 1986, there was one condo, that's just for the one condo, it was a one story. The next one was a one story condo built in 2006. The next one was, so these are individual condos. So you see, we had three that were one story and so on. So what I'm gonna do is just scroll down so that you can look at that. Okay, and these are the counties that the condo sold in. Two were in Clay, 23 were in Duval, nine in St. John's, one in Flagler, and one in Other. And that Other, you know, you get somebody that comes in from a different MLS and all that and sells something, sometimes it's Orman. This one happened to be in Alachua County. Okay, here I look at um, the original list price, then the closed price, which was the sold price, and the difference, how much less. These are the ones that sold below the list price. So you see that first one sold for $900,000 below, but you know, it was, you know, up there like starting off at almost three and a half million. And then the other one, 75. Now that's, that's something to look at from 425 to 350. So what I did was I put it in, in that. So you see the column with the difference and I'm going to scroll so that you can just take a look at that and you can pause the video as you like. All right, now let's take a look at that headline, okay? The record housing prices, okay? I'm gonna look at it all here. We're gonna look at the first one there. It's, it, now this was a nationwide headline, okay? And it's pretty recent. And we're gonna look at that and see what they have to say. Then I'm gonna break down, I'm gonna take a look at, okay, let's look at Jacksonville, because that's what we care about here in Jacksonville. And then just for grins, we're gonna compare, okay, the Jacksonville, what their numbers, to the state median price average. What is it? Now, of course, there's a lot of big, big ticket cities like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, some parts of Orlando. So we'll compare all that. So let's get to those headlines and what's going on with the prices. All right, here we go. Home sales dropped for third straight month as prices hit record high. What? <laughs> sales down, but the prices keep going up? Right here, sales of previously occupied U.S. homes fell in May for the third straight month as rising mortgage rates and, and record high prices discouraged many prospective home buyers during what's traditionally the housing market's busy period of the year. It has been slow this spring, okay? All right. Here they're saying that the national median sales price rose 5.5% from a year earlier to 419300 an all-time high on records going back to 1999. It's also up 51% from five years ago. And this is something we know that the housing market has been mirrored in a slump going back to 2022. That's when I started the show Bubble Watch, when mortgage rates began to climb from pandemic era lows, because everyone said we were on the verge of a crash at that time. And here we see, all told, there are about 1.3 million unsold homes at the end of last month, an increase of 6.7 from April and up 18.5% from May of last year. And we've been seeing that in our charts too, the increases. Translates into a 3.7 month supply at the current sales base. In a more balanced market between buyers and sellers, there's a four to five month supply, okay? All right, so let's look at this chart here. Um, all right, so let's look at this chart here from Redfin, okay, on the United States housing market, all right? Now, you're gonna see different types of numbers on different types of charts depending on what they do. Now, this chart defaults to right here, all home types, okay? So let's scroll down. We gave Redfin our credit. All right, what I'm going to do, see this number right here, that's when I, put my pointer on it, it shows right there, okay? That's May 2024, okay? Showing that the median sales price, 439.17, okay? Now, 
as I move it, see that number changes, okay? As I move that pointer, all right? Now, they're showing right up here at the top, the median sales price, now this was May, okay? 439,716, uh, but that's all home types, everything. Let's just go to single family homes. See, they've got townhomes and condos. Now, condos, you know, are, you know, are, you know, <laughs> well, this is a nationwide thing, so it's not as bad as Florida. We'll look at the Florida situation here in just a second. But let's just switch it to single family homes. Look at that number jump. 465. So most of you are out there looking for single family homes. 461,000 for the medium price. Everything's gone up. Remember, you were told to wait because the prices were coming down. Well, okay, and they, they still might, okay? We still might have that half price sale coming, but I'm just showing you the numbers, what they are right now, and you decide, you know, whether you wanna wait or you wanna, wanna do something if you can. I understand not everyone can, but holy crap, 461, I, I, this kind of shocks me that it went up that much. I was figuring things would be coming down more. I really didn't think they would go up like this. All right, so let's take a look at Jacksonville. All right, Jacksonville here, all types, 319. This last one, now look at here, okay? They're saying record high, okay? We're here at 319. You know, we saw a real dip there in January, but over here, here was the high, 320. So. Actually, the high was right, right before I started the show, May, May of 2022, when the rates kick, started kicking in. So that was the last hurrah. And then this right here dip you see right here is when everyone says we're on the way down, okay? But look at back here, okay? 2019, what was it? 203,000, okay? Now we're at 319, now that's all home types, okay? So watch this number up here. We're gonna go to single family homes. Boom, 337, so it is worse. And on my show, I'm showing, you know, I start showing some of these new homes that are around, you know, in the, in the you know, mid to upper threes. So, um, you know, that's why it's like, a lot of people are gravitating to some of these new homes if the median price of this, and this, these homes still need work if they're used homes. Very few homes do you see that are turnkey ready right now. All right, so let's compare it to Florida overall. Now, Florida, that's gonna take in those big heavy hitters like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, Tampa, parts of Orlando. So over Florida overall, we see here May 4, 2700, okay? Now, Let's go back here to 2019. What was it? Look at this one, 258,800. Holy crap, all right. Well, let's make it work. Let's go here and look at single family homes. 446,800 in all of Florida. That's Florida average. This is why I'm telling everybody, new homes up here in Northeast Florida are the best deal in the state if you're gonna be in a major metro area. Now, I get it, you know, in some areas, maybe like Ocala or something like that, you can find new homes for less and all that, but you're not next to the metro areas, close like if you're wanting to be in Jacksonville, Miami, you know, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, or uh, Tampa. And there's other areas throughout the state pockets where you can't get a new home a lot less, but I'm talking about these metro areas being near these metro areas. And this, the Jacksonville metro area is a better deal outside of everything. And let's go back and look at that Florida single family. I mean, this here is Jacksonville, 337,050 compared to Florida's 446,800 and the nationwide 461,611. And there's a lot of things there to decipher out of this, all right? First of all, look at the big divide. All right, we've got a big divide here in this country. No, I, not the blue versus red up, but that is a divide. But what I'm talking about is the people that say we're, we're in a crash situation, everything's crashing, everything's crumbling, and others that say it's a correction, okay? I'm on the side more of the correction side just by what I've been seeing. Because remember, in 2022 in May, when I started this show, Bubble Watch, everyone said this was the crash, it was coming 
and down and I've shown you all those charts where everything did look like it was sinking. Then it stopped and everything went back up. And what's causing all this here? You know what? It's simple. Supply and demand. I know it doesn't make sense, right? Okay, less people are buying. Interest rates are up. Okay, inventory is going up. So the price should be coming down, but it's not. It's actually going up. That's because the inventory levels still aren't to where they were. Now, Jacksonville seems to have more inventories percentage-wise of an increase than like a lot of other parts of the country, but you can see that, you know, it still hasn't had effect. And there's still, and there's still, you know, not enough people selling also. What's going to put more houses on the market? Well, more new construction, like this, for example, the house behind me, but also forcing people out, foreclosures. When you get a lot more foreclosures, that's putting more into the, into the production area of homes that are for sale, and so that'll bring a price down too. But will the foreclosure happen like it did in 2008? I don't think so. I'm not seeing it. The only thing that could really have an effect is that this inflation is, is eating everybody alive, and and it's eating a lot of people that they can't even afford, you know, maybe their mortgages or the increase in taxes insurance on top of that. So it all adds up. But a lot of people still have a lot of equity in their homes. So they're selling them before it goes into a foreclosure situation. All right. So I, I you know, I mean, I'm just, you know, these are the real numbers, whether you like it or not, that's it. And speaking of like it or not, if you like the way I put this show together, give me a thumbs up. If you like, if you'd like these, this channel and these videos, I got a lot more than this. I've got that, that show, Florida showdown, uh, you know, it's the home showdown where I compare every Sunday night. Okay. At seven o'clock come out, I compare a new home here in North Florida with some used homes in other parts of the state and show you that you have a better value here as we just shown there. All right. So all you got to do is just give me a call, you know, reach out to me here at this number or this email. All right. Now what we need to do is look at those houses of the week and condos of the week. And that's where I take a look at homes that sold below list and above list. Look and see what people paid for them. What was their appreciation value? How many days they were on the market? The whole, whole nine yards. Okay. So let's get to those houses of the week right now. All right, here we are with the house of the week. The first one, we're gonna start off with a house that sold below list price, okay? This house here is in Duval County, built in 1980, 1,508 square feet. Um, let's see, it's a four bedroom, two bath, okay? Now, um, see, it's being sold as is. Okay, the, this one here, also it says that um, it has an aged roof, it needs a lot of renovations, you know, a bunch of stuff, you know, so it's, it's a major fixer upper, all right? So let's take a look and take a look at the history of this one. Okay, now on all these homes of the week that I show in the condos, the history, this is how it'll be. At the bottom here, this price here is where they started out, and the price at the top is what they ended up selling it for, and over here on the right is the days on the market. So as you can see, this one started out at $550,000. They never lowered their price through the whole time. Um, and 26 days on the market, they got an offer for $495,000 and they took it. Now, what happened at that time too, at the Around the 26 days, um, we look on the side here, and nothing really happened here. It was just, you know, it was just out there. Sometimes they'll have an open house or something or make changes, but nothing really happened. You know, it just shows when it went under contract. So, 26 days and sold for you know $55,000 under. So you never know what the seller's thinking. You know, um, a lot of people don't think like, you know, that they could get this much off. When, less, when it's on the market less than a month, but it all depends on why that seller needs to sell, and you're not always gonna know that. All right, so let's look and see what they paid for it, okay? Back in 1999, okay, they bought it for $118,000, okay? So let's go ahead and put that in an appreciation calculator. Okay, here we are in appreciation calculator where they bought it for 118, sold it for 495, and over 25 years the appreciation was 5.83 percent, which is actually pretty good considering that it's a fixer upper, major fixer upper. Everything's a mess. Um, they probably didn't put anything into it in that whole time, or or just enough to get by, you know, to keep the house going. Um, now, a couple of things to consider here. 1999 is when they bought it. So, think about that. They went through the real crash of 2008. Okay, they went through the um, correction here of 2022. 
and still came out with 5.83%. Um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, about, you know, it's not, you know, it's not about timing to get in the market, it's about staying in the market, you know, um, that should be okay. So this one here, they, they were okay. Okay, now we're gonna look at a house that sold above list, okay? Again, this one's in Duval County, so they're our shining star today. This home built in 1953, 1,451 square feet, a 2-2, two -two, so it's a little bit smaller home, okay? Um, doesn't say anything about multiple offers or anything in this, um, so let's, uh, let's see what the uh, history shows. Okay, this one here we're gonna look at right there at the 389.900 where we're gonna start, and that's what they um, listed it for. In seven days, they ended up taking an offer for 410500 okay? Um, they never lowered the price, okay? And now what? Now this is where on the side, look, they had an open house. So I bet they had some traffic there. People came in um, and they could have grabbed a couple of multiple offers from the open house, uh, maybe only just one and another person beat and felt it was worth it. Now it was a cash deal so they didn't have to worry about an appraisal and ended up at 410. All right, let's see what they paid for it. Okay, this house was bought back in 2018, so before the mess started for $265,000. Let's put it into an appreciation calculator. And as you can see, the numbers worked out. They had it just over six years and ended up with 7.45% okay appreciation that they made off of it. So um, these people, of course, they bought it back before, you know, 2020. And um, so when housing prices were normal and uh, went through the correction of 2022 and still came out with 7.45. Um, they've taken obviously advantage of those rising median prices of homes. Okay, next up is going to be the condo of the week, and this is a condo that sold below. And since we don't have any condos that sold above list, this will be the only one we're going to show tonight. All right, this condo here, Built in 1966, so it is definitely an older one. 1,168 square feet. Total stories on this is three, so this condo would qualify under that new law, three stories and above, and because of the age, it's over 30 years. Okay, it's a two bedroom, two bath, and as with the condos, we take a look and see what their monthly association fee is, and this one here is $581 a month, okay? Okay, we look at the history here. They started out $425,000, and in 42 days, um, they ended up getting an offer for $350. Now, they did reduce it to $399 at the time that they got that offer for $350, and this one actually went with a conventional mortgage, and there was no concessions either. Okay, what did they pay for this? Okay, they bought it back in 1996 for $70,000, okay? So let's see what um, the appreciation on this is. Okay, here had it for over 28 years, appreciation 5.84. So again, these people um, having it that long, okay, buying it in 1996, they went through the real crash of 2008, and also they um, survived the um, correction here in 2022. And of course, they have also are surviving this condo backlash that's happening right now. And because they're in North Florida, it seems to be hitting here at a slower pace than areas like South Florida. So, um, you know, they got out when the getting was good, I guess, on this one. All right, so what's gonna happen next week? Are the houses going back up again and down? Now, a lot of these a lot of these charts are monthly charts, so we'll see and we'll track it, and we're gonna keep track of it. Hey, we're in season three of this show, right? This is week six in the can, next week's number seven. And until then, I'm out of here.